After receiving disappointing industrial data from China last week, overnight Japan reported that their economy grew slower than expected in the second quarter. With no economic data on the calendar here in the U.S., investors will be focused on Groupon's earnings report after the close today. I'm Lindsay Bell, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Lindsay Bell with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. This morning, stock futures here in the U.S. are opening flat despite a weaker than expected GDP number out of Japan and also a big decline in Greece's GDP. How are you setting up for trading today? I think we're, we're just looking at levels because we keep getting some bad news. We keep getting growth slowing around the world. We keep mm -hmm. getting news out of Europe that is not so devastating, but still uh, on the weaker side. So the, the whole push-pull between growth slowing and potential stimulus, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at the levels, and right now the chart in the S&P is looking pretty good. We've been digesting over this level we've been talking about for the past week or so. If you take a look here at the chart, we've been talking about this 1388 to 1390 level for a while here, showing commitment. A lot of bears say it's stolen here. I'm in the digesting camp. If you want to look at the macro pattern here, a lot can say that this is a cupping type pattern here. So if you have a cupping type pattern with a nice little handle, a cup and handle pattern is considered in, in my world one of the, the bullish patterns out there that you could that are reliable and trustable. So if this cup and handle pattern you know pans out and keeps working its way through and we see light volume above this area, if we come into the fall we see a, a big volume move above 1407, 1422. Bears are going to have a big decision to make, and bulls are going to be rewarded. Right. We are in the, in August, a light volume month here. And we have finished up earnings. We're getting into the tail end of it here. We do have a couple coming out this week. Uh, tonight, after the close, we'll hear from Groupon. This stock now, it's been down 40% in the last three months. You'd think investors would be have thrown the talent on this one. But on Friday, it, it, Morgan Stanley was reiterating their overweight rating, say the, saying the quarter was going to be in line, maybe even better. So the stock popped 12%. <laughs> how, how do you trade this? Can you trade it after the release tonight? I think you'd rather trade it after the release, and some people are saying everything's priced in. Mm -hmm. And I do remember a few quarters ago it had a good number, and it gapped up, and everyone was so bullish on it, and it was sold. Mm -hmm. You take a look at the chart here, Groupon, you will see technically it's been acting horrendous. This was the first day from the IPO. It got it plummeted. I remember actually a few months back we caught a nice trade here. It looked like it was going to break this downtrend to the upside, and then another bad earnings. And then here you go. This was the last time they reported good earnings. Look, they gapped up, and it sold. So the question is, now down from the, the $7 area, can you buy it and can you hold it? You know, I would say if gun to head, if I had to be long or I had to be short, I would be long going into the report. I do think if it's a bad report, it probably will be buyable because it's so been battered and bruised. So at this point, if you're not in Groupon and you stayed away from the melees, I'd say you don't have to be in it. There's no need. If you want to maybe take some in the money options, there'll be a big premium. But I think you wait for after the print or trade it after hours. And I do think if we get in line, on Groupon, it's going to go higher. It's being priced for, for death versus priced for anything um, positive. Yeah, exactly. Home Depot, uh, th this has been a great stock this year. It was your retail stock of the year last year. Um, it, it's trading above all of its moving averages. Could earnings beat tomorrow morning? Lita, a new mm -hmm. high. Yeah, I think that it's it's been consolidating well. It hasn't made new highs in a while. If you take a look mm -hmm. at the chart, you will see that it's been very methodical, moving to the upside, nice uptrend. You know, this was the you know just say look at this last one before breaking. Then you had your low in you know I would say a few months back, like most things did, and then it started to act and act well and show leadership again. It's above the eight day. It's above the twenty one day. I think if you're an investor in Home Depot, stay the course as a trader. You're probably watching it. It's been wedging now for the past four to six weeks consolidating what has been a big move, a very big move for the past, you know, ever since it was just, you know, the retail stock of the year. And the only reason why, again, because I want to show you technically, big, big base, looking for a big breakout. That's what I saw before this nice, you know, ascending move to the upside. So here we are wedged on the macro chart. I think this one, it's going to have to be a good report in order to see new highs. And I would actually say it has to be a good report, almost a, a bit of a beat, and then their guidance has to be Reason. good in order for it to make new highs. If it's in line, it might just take more time, but I still think that it's in the game. And if you're in a tier two or tier three as an investor, you know, just make sure to get back to a tier one or have some kind of hedge on because, you know, earnings has been a little bit hit or miss coming in, you know, this season. Now, Cisco reports earnings after the close. This stock got two upgrades last week. It's been running up into its earnings report. <laughs> um, you know, will it be able to 
gain momentum, though, because it hasn't been a great stock this year. It, it better be a good report. Yeah. And, and last week when Goldman and Piper upgraded it together, mm -hmm. everyone's like, ooh, when did they give out a free lunch? Right. So, so this report's going to have to be good to sustain this move because it's no longer in the doghouse at the lows where, you know, any kind of report would keep it going because here you look at the chart, you'll see, you know, Cisco's had a big move. Okay, you look at this downtrend, this is when technicians were talking about Cisco when, you know, looking for some more upside when it broke above the 16, and now look where it is. So you're talking a big move off the lows, you know, it's holding the gap, it got the 200 day. If you're long Cisco and you're a long-term believer, that means you've taken a lot of the pain and there's been a lot of pain in Cisco as you've seen, you know, that, you know, big move from 21 down here. So at this point, I'm more neutral. Um, I will not be long or short of this going into the report. If they do miss, you're going to see a downside move. And then, you know, I would say at this particular point, um, I would say support to watch after hours is, is coming, you know, right around, sorry, oops, right around the 16 level, which comes in right between these two moving average, right around the 1650. So I would say this is a point if they miss to, to look to buy back. But don't chase it up here because of the upgrades. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Exactly. Walmart has been the retail stock of this year. They report earnings on Thursday. Um, these guys have really benefited from value-conscious consumers. Um, and we should see that in the report. And I think this one could pop if it's a good number. Well, this one has had a great move. Mm -hmm. And this one was the retail stock of this year, yeah. only because, of, again, the decade-long base saying, you know what, it's consolidated enough, it's in safe hands. Again, using a little common sense, the cost-conscious consumer. I love that statement, Lindsay, because that's what consumers are becoming smarter. We're becoming smarter. We're becoming savers. So the, overall, this is a good thing. And if you look at the chart of Walmart, you'll see that it's had an amazing run. It's already met my targets of the year, so it's kind of hard. You know, I talked about 62. My target was 74 to 77. It hit a high here of 75.24. It's been wedging, you know, going sideways. But again, it's got to digest the move. I do think we're going to have to get a big report in order to get above this level and for it to continue because it's already had such a nice move. You know, some people are starting to short it already because they just want to short something higher. I just think there's a lot of underlying strength, so be careful. It's above the moving averages. Again, Never tier two or tier three into earnings, in my opinion, tier one at best or have hedges. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods reports earnings tomorrow. It's been in this ascending channel since June, um, but it sold off for three days last week. So how do you trade it ahead of earnings, if at all? Um, I don't think you do. You know, at this point, if you're an investor in it, you've been rewarded. It's just pulled off three, four days, so it's not quite pricing in perfection. If you look at the chart here, though, you know, it's, it's had a nice move, in, and it's definitely vulnerable. Look where, you know, where it came from. You know, what was this, almost uh, two years back from 28, as high as 52. So it's been rewarding you at this point. You know, uh, it's been above the moving average. I think some guys are getting a little scared because if you look here, markets acted a little bit better than this actual stock. So people, you know, are a little squirmish, which is fine. So at this point, again, same rules. If you're an investor in tier two, tier three, get down to tier one or have some kind of collar on or buy some puts just in case. If you're a trader, I would just wait. They have an unbelievable report. You buy it above 52. If they have, uh, you know, if, if they miss and things aren't the way they should be, you know, you have support at 48 and, you know, and then 45 underneath. We're going to take a quick commercial break and get back into the trenches with the industrials after this. Hello, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com. Really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take your trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go to T3Live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission. Two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Welcome back. We're getting into the trenches with some industrial stocks. First up is Emerson. This is a new stock that Stephanie Link initiated a position in in the Action Alerts Plus portfolio. It's a diversified industrial company that's highly cyclical. So if you think the global economic slowdown is troughing, this is one you should be in. It trades at 13 times, which is well below its 16 times historical average. And they have thir a third of their revenues coming from the emerging markets. So, and the, st the stock has been doing better lately. 
Well, the reason why the overall market is doing better is because some of these laggard groups over mm -hmm. the past, I would say, two to three months are acting much better. They came off the lows, they gave you nice reversal patterns, and they've shown commitment. And if you look at the chart of this stock, you will see exactly what we're talking about. Stock, you know, ever since the highs back in April, May, really was a, a laggard, broke the 200-day, came all the way down. But look what happened right here. I want to show you why I love igniting bars, because igniting bars ignite a move. And look at this day right here. This is a huge igniting bar, okay? And although it did come back and retest where it came from, it held. So even if you missed this and saw this start to uh, come back in vogue, you could have put it back on the radar and then you had a nice buy price when it crossed 47. And then I think you guys were talking about buying it somewhere in here. It reclaimed the 200 day. You didn't have to worry about all this noise. You could have even bought it then. And then on Friday, look at the power here, right back up to you know previous resistance. I do think it's going to come into a level where some profit takers come in because look at the, you know, the size of the resistance. But overall, it's now above the 21 and 8 day. It's also extended from the 8 day. So I never want to see you buy even a stock in this group, you know, which is not typically the, the friskiest group so far away from the 8 day. So if you're not in this one, I think you wait for a bit of a pullback to about 49.50. And you know, if we do get more weakness, this is support one, support two. But overall, acting much better here. Eaton has always been an old favorite of the Action Alerts Plus team. It's one that they do own. Um, it's They like the Cooper acquisition as well as their more exposure to the domestic economy. And also, this is a late cycle play as well. Now, it's been up 20% in the last month, so you probably need to wait a little while to, for a pullback to buy this one. Right. And, and this one also gave you some signals that finally it went from a laggard to a catch-up play. Mm -hmm. And is, uh, although I love sticking with leaders, uh -huh. you know, as a trader, if you're not caught in the noise, you could always play a laggard play or a, a laggard group that has a spirited move that has commitment. And if you look at this stock, I know many times in the past month you guys have talked about it. And look at the size of this you know, wide range bar that also broke this downtrend right here. So this 40 was a big level. You know, you had your lower level finally from going down. It started going sideways to show you that the momentum to the downside started to falter or started to stall. And then here was your entry around 40. Had a quick move up. Then it, you know, went sideways again, and now it continues. This is, you know, a little bit away from the 8 and 21. So if you're not in it, I wouldn't just chase it. But overall, the trend here changed. The trend here changed on this day. This was, what, July 23rd. And these are days to take notice. And when you see a day to take notice, that's when you switch gears. And the stock's been acting much better ever since. General Electric, this stock has industry leading growth in its industrial business, which has been up 10%. They're seeing improving margins, backlog is great, and there is solid free cash flow on the stock. Um, they have a September analyst meeting coming up, which should be a catalyst. We're hoping that maybe it can break above recent highs. Well, this stock. You know, it's good that the stock's going up there because that's good for America. A lot of people have it in their 401k. A lot of people just held their nose and went on the water when this yeah. stock, you know, capitulated and went down into the troughs of the market way back when, a few years ago. And since then, you know, there's been some methodical trades. I tend to trade GE maybe twice or three times a year when there's a really good setup. If you look at the chart here, you will see that, you know, every now and then there is one. This is like more of the macro chart. And if you look here, you know, there was a, a frisky type move in GE, you know, when it did cross above this 17 level for a trader, nice four day move. And then there was another nice tradable move right here. You know, when it broke above this resistance, this resistance at this point was 1950. And then it consolidated, went sideways. It's been going sideways pretty much this entire year. And then, you know, when the market started to act better, it's good to see that it started to act better. So now if you look right here where we're at, you know, you have a nice flag, bull flag type pattern. So if you're in there and you bought here around 20 on this break of this uh, mini downtrend, now it's holding higher, it's holding the eight day. You know, 2118, this thing breaks above this and you're gonna see higher prices. I guess if let's go to the weekly chart to see where it could go this year. And so I can give you guys a, a roadmap. And it does look like, wow, above that level, above 2165, you know, there's nothing in the way where at some point, I would say, you know, cause it's G, it's slow, give it, give it six to nine months and this thing could be 26 to 28 bucks. Not too bad. Now, Dover, this company has, the stock has consolidated in the 50-51 range. It had a bounce after that. Where can we see resistance, maybe? Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, so if you go to the chart of Dover, which is something that I really don't trade, but again, it probably has the same kind of mantra where you had a downtrend where it wasn't acting well all year, and then somewhat broke above it right around here, probably around that same day. That's why we like to look at groups. You know, it's been a little faulty. It's not as frisky as some of the other ones. It's above the eight day. It's being held back by the 200 day, but most of these have already taken back the 200 day. I'd say if you want to be in this stock and you like it, you know, I would say probably better to buy it closer to 54 and a half to 55 ish, you know, and just make sure if you're in this group, you don't need to be in three, four, five of these. Just pick one or two because, yeah. 
you know, I'd rather see you have like four or five to six positions in different sectors versus having four or five in the same. Sure, diversification is definitely key. But not 20 to 30 stocks, which everyone thinks. You know, you're not, oh, yeah. no one here is a mutual fund, okay? Six to eight of the best stocks, that's it. Yeah, you gotta do what you can handle. Exactly. Let's get into some quick hits. We'll start with Apple. Obviously, it's been sticking above that 615 level. Where can it get to next, Scott? Stock gave you three great entries since the earnings discount. One was 580.80. You take a quick look at the chart. I'm just going to run through it. It was right here when it went back into this gap. And this is when I re-entered the stock right around 602. I am holding it. If it could start getting above 623 to 625, you're going to see another move. And there's really no resistance back into the high here of 644. I'm not sure if it's going to happen before the September 12th meeting or, or after. But overall, digesting well. Eight day just caught up. I'm long this. And I will be adding if we get a close above 623.50 to 625.50. Lennar has been riding the home builder wave up. Uh, can it get above the 52-week high there? Looks good. Trend's been up. This group's been strong. Lennar has been one of the leaders. So if you take a quick look here, um, at, for a trade, I, I wouldn't really chase it, but it has been consolidating well. It's having a little bit of trouble with 32, but it gets above 32. You're going to see another move. This stock has been a leading home building stock since early this year, and it's been a great one to stay with. Val is a stock that Stephanie Link just initiated a position in last look. week. I know the charts a little bit weaker than what you would like to see, but it was a play on the raw materials for the industrial space and well as well as a bet on a rebound in China. Okay, well this one is a laggard trade. Mm -hmm. So for laggards, I like tier one. And then when it starts acting better, you get into tier two. So this is your anticipation and it is acting better. So she's very great at spotting value. I'm, I'm not as smart on the fundamental side. So when she put, buys something in the hole, I put it on my radar because when it starts acting better technically, that's when you get the bang for the buck. And if you look here on Vail, you'll see, you know, here was that reversal low right around here. So shows you that like almost, almost like a red dog reversal where, you know, it, it matched the previous low, broke below support, came back up. There was a nice gap here, it held the gap, and it's been working its way higher. So at this point, I think it's better. More, you know, People are looking for other vehicles to go with and it closed strong on Friday. So I do think you have room to the 200 day. Resistance comes right here, right in the 2050 area, and then you have 22. So I think you could stay with this one and it's, you know, your stop could be right here at this gap um, of 1770. But you know, if you need something, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be my only stock to hold, but you know, it could be in a portfolio if you're looking for some value. Right. Uh, how about Western Digital? Let's take a look in the move in that one. This one I, I want to show you just, you know, a tactical strategy because we always talk about if a stock has a pro gap and then holds up and doesn't fill it, you could buy it in that base. And then once it starts to go above that little flag or base, that's when you get in motion. If you look here at WDC, I couldn't, I couldn't pick a better vehicle or better looking chart. You have a, a huge gap here, right? Right there, gapped up and then didn't even attempt to fill it, showing you demand. So this could have been your tier one. And then once it cleared this high here of 4088, that was your momentum entry. You could have waited for it to happen or been in tier one anticipating it, and now we're at basic highs of the year. So it shows you that you don't have to be in when you're not sure, but if what makes you sure is a gap that holds and you see the pent-up momentum here, tier one, tier two, now it's on its way, and I would just trade them and trail them. That's what I talk about with strong stocks. How about Seagate too then, just finally? Yeah, both of them together. Yeah. You know, been very strong. This one, they, they give a pass to. The earnings weren't great and it was buyable. And look at this thing. That was on this day. It came into the gap, but <laughs> buyers came right away, closed up. And if you wanted to make sure, you could have waited. And then here is your flag pattern. We talked about Seagate and Western Digital many times and off the charts as a swing trade. And if you look above, you know, 3110, look where it is right now. I can't believe how great this sector is because I remember when the tsunami hit in Japan, People left these stocks for dead, so it goes to show you if there's value, you like the company, you could buy it, and then when it technically starts changing, that's when you add. Exactly. Well, those are the stocks we're looking at. Those are the levels in the S&P we're looking at and some of the sectors we're watching. So check in at the end of the day for the Daily Recap with Scott and the T3 Live team.